This documentary is about some delightful creatures called lemurs and uh, what's being done to save them from extinction in their native land, which is Madagascar. I'm going to be going there to see what's happened to some black and white rough lemurs who were bred in captivity, come on, and were released into the rainforest in Madagascar about five months ago. A release like this of lemurs has never been tried before, and if it works, it's good news for all lemurs, not just for you guys. The word lemur means ghost, and that's just what these creatures are, ghosts of our past. Ancient primates that roam the world's forests back in the mists of time. I love saying things like that, but I'll try to stop because I know it's irritating. The simple truth is, I adore lemurs. They're extremely gentle and well-mannered and pretty, and yet great fun. Should have married one. So it's worrying that they may be heading towards extinction. My story starts in Jersey Zoo in the Channel Islands, probably my favorite place on Earth. I first came here 30 years ago, filming for Monty Python, and I was amazed to discover this safe haven, this Noah's Ark for animals which were facing extinction in the wild. Jersey Zoo was set up in the late 50s by Gerald Durrell, whose widow, Lee, carries on his work. With her help, I managed to channel funds from the Fierce Creatures premiere to send some of these black and white rough lemurs, born in captivity, back into the wild. Vitally important to the species, but risky for the individuals, so I was rather glad to discover that my old friends here in Jersey had failed the audition. For this particular reese that we're talking about, uh, you didn't use lemurs from Jersey? No, the Jersey Zoo lemurs were not chosen. Sorry. And the reason is that this project is part of a, a consortium of zoos. This is an international consortium. But it turns out that the American members of the consortium had the best pool of black and white lemurs from the point of view of genetics. And so it was American ones that we chose for at least these first few phases of the release. In the reserve where the project is taking place, that population of black and white rough lemurs is really crashed. They're only about 30, 35, I think. And so that little population in the reserve itself is critically endangered. And we've been putting these back to, um, you know, give new bloodlines, new genetics to try to boost those up again. I so see. So it's a kind of two-fold uh, process, yeah. So if the ones that we've released, what, five months ago, start mm -hmm. to interbreed, then that whole population is, what, virtually saved? Yes, ex exactly. So this whole project, you know, it's very important on several different fronts. So that they don't really become too inbred? Exactly, that's exactly what it's all right, about. Otherwise yeah. they'd get like the British upper class. And I wouldn't want that to happen to creatures. Oh, no, it. not in Madagascar, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it was that last year, an elite squad of hand-picked, highly trained rough lemurs found themselves sitting at an airport in North Carolina, waiting to embark on their special mission. The Carolina Five, as they're fondly known, were all born and brought up at Duke University Primate Center in the USA. This carefully selected family group were about to put their survival skills to the test in the wilds of the rainforest. It's a pioneer operation. And the first challenge? A 20-hour plane journey without so much as a decent video. Madagascar lies on the other side of the world from the USA, off the southeast corner of Africa. And if it looks like a tiny little island, it's actually over twice the size of Britain. After two days traveling, the Carolina Five were back in the land of their ancestors, headed for their natural habitat, tropical rainforest. 
They're being taken to a remote spot in the eastern part of the island where the local population of rough lemurs is dwindling fast. The release site is way up in the mountains and the only way to get there is on foot. A team of American, Malagasy and British zoologists has been preparing for over a year for this groundbreaking project. And they'll be working in shifts to track the lemurs round the clock for the first critical months. No one knows whether this precious group of five lemurs will be able to fend for themselves. In other words, we don't really know if they're going to survive. The fact that the Carolina Five are a family will be crucial in helping them cope with their strange new world. So it's important that they're released together. The mother, Presepe, is let out first so that the rest of the group can see her. Her mate is next, followed by their children, Letitia and Janus, and finally the grandson, Saf. It's up to Presepe to lead the way into the great unknown. And off she goes. It doesn't take too long for the others to catch on. And soon they seem to be bounding through the trees like naturals. Only the daughter, Letitia, gets left behind in the rush. The problem now, of course, is to keep up with them. It's important that lemurs don't stray out of the rainforest. There's only so much that the team can do to help them, otherwise, they're on their own. Ha, ha, ha.